Okay, just trying to pin what we are talking about tonight. All right, there we go. We in there like somewhere. Jackson, you ready tonight? Hey, Jay. Hey, girl. Tonight, y'all, we are talking about finances. Y'all know last week we were talking about, oh, gosh, Jackson talking about we turning up tonight. Well, let's go. I'm, I'm ready to have this conversation, and I'm ready to hear y'all perspectives, too. So, y'all know last week we were talking about um, why it's hard for millennial women to be submissive today in today's society. So, as we were talking, the conversation bridged over into finances because obviously that's a part of being comfortable with submitting to somebody knowing that they got your back, knowing that they can protect and they can provide. And so we got into the conversation of how finances affects whether or not um, a woman is able to submit to her partner. And so this week we are talking about finances. Yes, we got Miriam back. Okay, okay. It's looking like it's going to be a good night. Um. So, yeah, we're talking about um, how finances affect whether or not you can be. Well, last week we talked about how finances could affect whether or not you can submit to a man. And this week we're talking about everything finances. Hey, girl. Um, yes, tonight we're talking about everything finances. Okay. Who pays for everything? Who pays for some stuff? Do y'all do 50-50? Is it like a, a conversation y'all have? Does the woman, um, is the woman assuming that the man is supposed to pay for everything? Um, I've even heard that some people believe um, that whoever asks the person out on a date is the person who's supposed to pay. Um, and so I wonder how that really works because... What if one person asking all the time and the other person never really asks? That could get confusing to me. But what y'all think? What y'all think? Jack, I know you had a lot to say last week. So I'm, I mean, are you ready? Are you ready to, to jump on here and have this conversation? I think this is a really good topic. I was talking to one of my friends about it earlier. And I mean, y'all, she was just dropping knowledge. Honestly, like... This is all kudos to her because I was literally taking notes as she was talking because, y'all, I did not know that the number one, um, the number one killer to relationships, well, there, I'm at work acting like I'm working. Oh, man. Okay. Well, make sure, make sure you put your opinions in the chat because I know you had a lot to say last week. Um, but we were talking about. You know, we were talking about finances and everything. And she was really dropping knowledge. And I did not know that the number one killer for um, marriages, the, the number one reason for divorces is finances. So she enlightened me how finances can ruin relationships um, such as, okay, so she used an example like, if you are married and Jackson, what do you do for work at 7 p.m.? <laughs> Not you in his business, Miriam. <laughs> um, Miriam said you need to be at the house. Right. It is it is too late to be working. <laughs> but um, so she used the example that if a man and a woman is married, right, and they decide to have kids together. And, you know, obviously y'all start off with like one child and then she gets pregnant again and then again and then again. And then next thing you know, y'all got five kids together. How do y'all handle finances? Like that's a whole nother topic of conversation. But 
it can work, right? But with a conversation. And so she was saying like, okay, y'all end up having five kids, not really considering that y'all got to pay for these kids and your finances are supposed to increase. But what if they have not increased? And mom just decided like, hey, I want to use my money to go buy bags and shoes, you know? And the husband is like, I'm trying to provide for you and all these kids we created together. And mom ain't really ain't really trying to participate in that too much. So I thought that was interesting. Or, you know, the woman taking the lead and paying for everything and then the man not feeling like a man. And so we was talking about all this, y'all, and it was so good. It was so good. So I know that it depends on particular individuals that not everybody is going to have the same. Um, not everybody is going to have the same idea about how finances should be um, distributed. So y'all let me know in these comments. What do y'all think? Like, should it be 50 50? Should the man pay for everything? Should the woman pay for everything? Is that a conversation to be had on the first date or later down the line? Like, what do y'all think? Right, y'all y'all all up in these com comments networking. I love to see it. <laughs> she says, send me your resume, Jack. She's trying to get you home on time. I know that's right. <laughs> so, yes, y'all let me know. Ladies should pay for it all. I totally agree. No, really. I do. <laughs> it's not what you know. It's who you know. That is true. That is true, Miriam. Network. Network. So, Jack, we know you don't really believe that ladies should pay for it all. We already know that. Because we know you got the big bank. We know you ain't going to let her touch a dime. While y'all answering in the comments, I'm just going to go through just a little bit of the notes that I was taking um, as me and my friend were having this conversation. So I already mentioned how the number one reason for a divorce is finances. Right. Big bank. Big bang. <laughs> um, and so y'all are supposed to be answering how our finances set up in a relationship for you. What what does that look like for you? Um, so some things to consider are to not accept the responsibilities that you can't handle. So consider this as you talking. It may sound good that you want to pay for everything. But you may not financially be able to pay for everything and you don't want to resent your partner for wanting you to be able to pay for everything. Right. So, like, let's be realistic about <laughs> about what we're willing to do. So, let's see. Um, Jack is Julius from Everybody Hates Chris. Is he? Jack, are you are you um frugal? Uh, I definitely think it's a conversation that should be had early, not first date, but early. I totally agree that it should happen early on. So that was one of the points that, um, that we were talking about that the combo should happen within the first six months of dating. So, you know, like when you get to a point in your relationship where y'all are like maybe spending the night together, oh, excuse me, y'all. Spending the night together or like spending a lot of time y'all are sharing maybe I love you's at this point. Y'all are talking about um, getting more serious in a relationship, you know, maybe po possibly talking about moving in within the next six months to a year, moving in together. Um, she referred to it as pillow talk. And I totally agree with that. When you start being in the same bed taking naps together, talking about living together, you know, 
that's it's, it's time to have some pillow talk it's time to talk about those expectations you know like what are you looking for from your partner how how should they show up in finances because just because y'all like each other don't mean that this person is willing to give you 100 percent of their check that's not something that is to be assumed. So definitely if y'all talking about being serious and talking about moving forward together, finances is going to have to be a topic of conversation because even in dating, like, does it change between how finances are set up in dating? Because like y'all are both still independent, but when you talk about getting into a relationship, does that change? Does the, you know, like, does the woman start expecting for the man to pay for everything? Because like, hey, I'm your woman now. You know, you should you should wine and dine me. Or does that turn around and change again in marriage? Like, for sure. I definitely think that should be a conversation to happen early on. Because if you're thinking he should pay for everything and he thinking, oh, let's do 50-50, that's going to show up. That's going to show up and y'all going to be angry with each other. Let's see. It's 50-50 for me because we're building. Okay, so you don't think that y'all can build outside of being 50-50? What, what about 50-50 makes you think that that's more um, efficient to be able to build? Okay, I'm seeing women saying 50-50. Okay, I was not, I was not expecting this. So y'all enlighten me. Enlighten me on why you think that y'all should split everything down the middle. What do you mean um, when you say building? Like, what is what does that look like? What's not efficient about 50-50? I'm asking y'all. I ain't saying it's not efficient. I'm asking because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a different approach tonight. I'm gonna be curious. So I would like to know. What do y'all think is efficient about 50-50? Why isn't, why isn't, uh, cause last week somebody said 80-20 and somebody said 90-10. So why do you think 50-50 is most efficient in your relationship? So for the people who are just coming in, we are talking about finances and how, and how um, finances are set up in relationships. Are you okay with, what do they say, going Dutch? Is that is that what it's called? Are you okay with splitting everything down the middle? So when y'all go on dates and your total is $22, both of y'all pull out $11. And I guess y'all figure out who, <laughs> who on a tip. <laughs> Tell me, like, when y'all want to take a trip, y'all split it 50-50. Like, how does it work for y'all? I'm curious, because y'all y'all, y'all saying, y'all saying 50-50. Now, I don't want to assume nothing. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't I don't want to assume nothing. So here's the thing, right? Um I'm literally asking how are y'all gonna split it up? So do you say, all right, well, when we go on dates, he pays for all the dates. But if we move in together, then we split the bills down the middle. Let's see. Dates are on him. I'm talking big things. Okay. Okay. So he's paying for all the dates. And then say if y'all move in together or y'all decide to buy a car, then y'all will split that down the middle. Okay. So, so y'all saying 50, 50 is efficient. Why shouldn't the 50, 50 be considered for dates because like if it's efficient right you want to be efficient all around you don't want to you know be kind of lax over here and you know not really keeping the standard across the board is it conditional you know like what if he decide hey i don't want for the i don't want to pay for the date this time 
you know, since we do everything else 50-50, why don't you pay for the date this time? You know, I paid for the last 10. You got this one? I, are you are you down for it? Let's see. Uh, it's more of a 70-30 when you say it like that. When I, when I say it like, okay, okay, so it's more of a 70-30 instead of a 50-50 um because he's paying for dates he's not that's not that's not 50 50 if, if him paying for if y'all going half and half on dates is considered petty then you are right it's not 50 50 so that makes sense it's more it's more 70 30 okay he can pay mortgage and i can pay gas water and electric okay so how do you know that the gas, water, and the electric is going to equal the mortgage? I'm going to make y'all think tonight. I'm going to make y'all think tonight because I really, I really want to know. I really want to know how, how y'all thinking. How is 50-50 efficient? How is 70-30 efficient? We spoke about building, right? Well, that's what y'all said, 50-50 because... It helps to build. So let's see. Well, when we go out, he pays not because I can't afford my part, but because it makes him feel more of a man. Mm, okay. So do you think that he will feel less of a man if y'all are sharing everything? It's very conditional. Okay, okay. This ain't Judge Duty. We a team. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that though. Okay, so you wouldn't mind paying for the next date. Okay, show the man some love. That's fair. I don't think you should keep count on dates in the beginning of a relationship. In my relationship, it's more 70-30. But in terms of bills and such, I wouldn't mind splitting bills. Anything extra is saved for other plans. It's not 70-30 by choice. It's because he doesn't take my money. Okay. We're not counting pennies here. We're a team. Okay, so I'm hearing this team stuff, right? I'm hearing, go team. We're building. But let me think about it. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish reading the comments. Let me wrap my head around it. Yes, he said out his mouth to me previously he said what out of his mouth to you previously let me go back to your other comments see if you said anything it's conditional okay so if we're a team and we're building together how are we conditional right like teamwork make the dream work so why is it conditional why should there be conditions on it if the goal is a team effort why should he have to pay for all the dates what what's so significant about the dates i don't think that that's childish and i don't think that that's petty um if you're saying that it's teamwork and it's 50 50 i don't think it's petty to wonder why um i don't well i don't think it's petty to put it in the dates too. I'm trying to figure out why it's petty to put that condition on the dates too because what if y'all like going to nice places right so I was in a relationship where we stayed fine dining and I mean literally um if we couldn't think of what to eat we would settle on sushi or seafood or a steakhouse that's not typical for um, some people. So what if you want to go to STK Steakhouse? What if you want to go to um, Ruth Chris? You know, that, those things add up. So why aren't dates considered in that, in that teamwork, that 50-50 budget? Cause he can spend, he can spend upwards to, I would say if y'all, if y'all are eating out often, 
within a weekend let's just let's just say a weekend span right if y'all like to say order appetizers when you go out um and you order your entree you may have dessert you may have drinks your bill is going to come up to at least a hundred dollars so if y'all build him and he's spending a hundred dollars in a night on the both of y'all he could have used that on something else right if we talk about teamwork and and 50 50 women sometimes like to reward their men if she wants to pay why argue hmm okay 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 so so mario you are saying that it's okay for her to want to reward you so if y'all are at a restaurant and she says hey it's on me tonight you're gonna be like oh, okay cool why do you think that some guys are not okay with um with being like okay cool like we just saw um somebody else in the comments say that her man don't allow her to pull out her wallet they they will go back and forth about it because He's not allowing it. So what do you think is the difference between, you know, okay, like, yes, you may want to reward him, but why, why do you feel comfortable allowing her to pay for something in front of you? And that's not judgment. I'm literally just curious. Um, we're not a team. If I'm paying for everything, playing tennis, if that's the case, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but I think, I think sometimes, uh, if you're talking about conditions, it can look like playing tennis, right? Like the ball is not always in your court when you're being conditional. He felt he feels like less of a man if I pay. Okay. Okay, I've heard that before. That men feel like less of men when they pay. But you can see that Mario is saying if she wants to reward her man. There should be no argument to that. So it doesn't feel like a reward if you have to pay. That's what it sounds like. Okay. He just want to feel like the manly man. Time to get you a new man. <laughs> he feels more of a man paying for dinner. Does he feel less of a man splitting the bills with you? Okay. That's a good question. That is a good question, and I'm glad that you said it like that because that is definitely something that I feel like y'all should answer. So, does he feel more? He feels more of a man when paying for dinner. So, does he feel less of a man when splitting bills? Because <clears throat> I'm I'm trying to figure out these conditions. I'm trying to figure out why conditions don't apply why why conditions don't apply well let me not say it like that why 50 50 is okay in big things but not in the small things why are there conditions because if we get into a root of it, the root of it all some guys don't feel like men or they feel less of a man when they're um when they're not able to pay for stuff if i can cover the bill of any amount on any night out i feel like my partner should as well totally agree with that we should both be able to pick up the tab even if i pick it up majority of the time i totally agree with that i totally agree with that that y'all shouldn't be ordering nothing that you can't that you can't order alone i totally agree with that so that was one of the points that um that i brought up earlier to not accept responsibility that you can't handle and i've heard that there's been some cases y'all probably i don't know tell me if y'all ever been in a situation like this um where you go out on a date and the person is ordering stuff that 
they typically would not order. Like, they usually probably go get a four for four at Wendy's, but they done sat in front of you and done ordered a steak, a baked potato, salad, drinks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that has happened to some of us in these comments. Not me, but, you know, because I don't, I don't pay for dates. You know, if I just want to get personal, I don't, I don't pay for dates. I could, right? I'm not going to go out and like order things that I can't afford or if the person I'm on a date with decides like, um, I'm just going to get up and walk out right now. You know, like if it's the first date, I could foot the bill, but I've never personally been in a situation where somebody I was legit dating has said, hey, pick this tab up. That would that to me, that would be uh that would be the last date. <laughs> that, that would yeah. For me, that would be the last date. Um I see, not his reward. Oh, <laughs> his reward is favors that that you wouldn't normally do. Um my reward is a romantic night out when we hit certain goals. At least that's how we try to set it up. Ah, okay, okay. You don't pay for dates. I don't. I don't. And you know what? So, this is why it's important to have that conversation in the first six month period. Because if y'all are getting to like each other... For somebody out there, I'm sure that's a turnoff. Me saying that I don't pay for dates. Do I care? No, because you're not my audience, right? I'm like, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to say like, yeah, sure. Like, I like you. So I'm going to pay for, I'm going to pay for our dates. Um, if that's not something that I'm comfortable with. So if I meet somebody who says, um, I don't want to pay for dates for me, that, that won't work. So I'm glad we had this conversation. It was nice meeting you and you know, um, <laughs> I got, I got friends who do that. Wow. So yeah. So people real life out here ordering stuff that they know they cannot pay for <clears throat> yeah no nah, that's crazy that's crazy and and that's something that i would never do i would never go on a date and order stuff that i know i couldn't pay for if i can't foot the bill alone if i can't pay for everything on the table nah there's no reason to be ordering it i think that's selfish no judgment taken. I'm saying in a case where she's like, babe, I got this tonight. I'm not about to feel less of myself because my woman decides she wants to treat me for a night. Okay. Am I supposed to feel a way if she treats me on my birthday? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's, that's your preference. Some guys would. So there are some people who... Um, you try to surprise them. Okay. So I'll say like, even in, in my friend group, right? So I went to, um, <clears throat> I went to a conference and my friend paid for me to go to the conference. Like we had a hotel room. I paid for my portion of the hotel room. Um, but the ticket towards the conference was paid for by my friend and it was a gift, right? <clears throat> um, she was not expecting me to pay for it. I know it's kind of different because we're both women, but um, just for example, right? She did not expect me to pay for my way to the conference because she'd already paid for it. But at the conference, um, they were talking about um, blessing somebody, right? And so my blessing to her was um, reimbursing her. So I just sent the money to her, everything that she had paid for on my behalf. I sent it back to her. Um, and obviously her first instinct was to, um, want to send it back. And I'm like, don't know, don't send it back. I think it's kind of the same where like, 
you know, if you want to reward somebody or you want to bless somebody, you should be able to do that. So I agree. I agree with that. If if your girl wants to um wants to wine and dine you, you know, she wants to surprise you, she wants to take you out. I don't feel like that should be a reason to feel less of a man, but I do know that there are some men who absolutely will not let you pay for anything. Not a date, not a bill, not a nothing. Shawty ordered the <laughs> the steak, 12 ounces. That steak better jump off the plate. <laughs> oh, I know that's right. But what you gonna do? I mean, if she if she order a steak, what you gonna do? Are you gonna tell her in that moment, like, hey, you need to pay for that steak? <laughs> what can you say in such a moment? Oh man. I, I wouldn't even want to be put in such a situation. Oh, man, you're going to make her pay for the steak. Oh, boy. Okay, so are you making her pay for the steak because you can't afford to pay for the steak? Or are you making her pay for the steak because it was just simply expensive? Because... If you can't pay for the steak, that's a different conversation than, you know, you know, I mean, if, if y'all dating now, if it's the, if it's the first date, I can, I can understand. Right. But like, if y'all been dating for a portion of time and she decides that she wants to order a steak, you still gonna make her pay for it. Okay. Oh, okay. So here we go back to the who invited who out. So we are talking about, um, we're talking about finances, right? And we're talking about how some people are okay with doing everything 50, 50. So right now I've been referring to a lot of things about dating, but we can talk about the bigger stuff too, as far as bills, Right. So is the man paying for all the dates? But then when it's time to move in together, we're we're doing everything 50 50. Are y'all doing this 70 30? You know how how y'all running it? Are you OK as a man being able to say, hey, babe, I need you to help pay for X, Y and Z? Because we know some, some men are not okay with that. Let's be real. People need to stop going on dates to places they can't afford. Thank you. Thank you. That is true. Now, I can agree with that. If you cannot afford it, don't go. If she say, hey, I want to go to, I want to go to Pasha. I want to go to STK Steakhouse. I want to go to Ruth Chris. I want to go to, <clears throat> what's that other place that I like? Fogo. I want to go to Fogo to Chow. Like, if you cannot afford to go to those places, do not agree and then sit in front of her and ask her to pay for her portion. That is just tacky. That is classless. That is it. You already set in the set in the encounter up for shenanigans because if you cannot afford to pay for anything on that menu that she decides to order at least twice you should not be there if your budget is chilies or uh <clears throat> she want a steak so maybe you can't afford a, a steakhouse you got to go somewhere that mm, i would say maybe like uh arizona's or texas roll house Longhorn, if you if that's more in your budget, then that's where you need to be showing up at partner. But don't sit there and say, oh, you ordered the steak. You need to pay for your <laughs> you need to pay for your portion of the meal. That's not right. That's not right. Anything that she ordered, you should be able to pay for it twice. That's 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 my rule. Anything that I order, I can pay for at least twice, because what if what does she say? Hey, um. I'm going to get another meal to go, right? Y'all been dating. And she said, I'm going to get another meal to go. I don't feel like cooking tomorrow, so I'm going to order me. Um, I had a steak. 
I'm going to order me a plate of uh, chicken Alfredo to go. Are you going to say, uh-uh, whoa, I only brought enough to pay for <laughs> to pay for your steak? She going to be mad. <laughs> she going to be hurt. What if she want a drink? What if she want to have a drink? You know them drinks don't be, don't be cheap. It's, you better off to go buy a bottle after the date. But what if she want to drink with her meal? What if she want dessert? What if y'all want appetizers? Like, be able to, if y'all don't hear nothing else I say, be able to afford the date wherever y'all go. Let's see. To shed more light on the conditional part of it, life is up and down. So when it comes to us living together, I spend his money first, then mine. But in actuality, whoever makes more pays more. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Life is up and down. Oh, excuse me. Totally agree with that. I know. So I know that last week when we spoke about life being up and down, uh, the question rose of, so if life is down right now, you don't want to hustle harder to make more money. Um, to continue to provide in the way that you were providing before. Some people don't have that hustle. Some people don't see it that way. They just, they're down and that's just what it is. And they going to wait on to come up. Um, if I order a steak and I can afford it, but you can't, we shouldn't be on this date. Yes. Yes. I totally agree. I totally agree. Date people who are in your tax bracket. So I'm trying to figure out why if Shadi ordered a steak, she got to pay for it herself. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Definitely should not be dating somebody who cannot afford where y'all at. Because at the end of the day, you know, then y'all not, y'all not on the same playing field. You paying for your man meal on his birthday? Am I paying for my man's meal on his birthday? Um, if he allows me to. I don't think it would be because he asked me to. No, I know it wouldn't be because, <laughs> because he asked me to. Um, but so anything that I do, it's going to be it's going to be a surprise. It's going to be thoughtful. Um, and so I don't mind. Like, I don't, I'm not going to stand next to you and ask for your permission to pay. Like, if anything, I've helped plan your birthday or we at the house and I'm cooking a birthday meal. So the whole paying for his meal on his birthday Yeah, I'll do it, but not because he asked me to. Fogo at the crib, you feel me? <laughs> right, in the kitchen, exactly. If you can't afford it, don't don't show up to Fogo. Because at the end of the day, that bill got to be paid. Out in public, he pays for everything because we generally stay home or try to save together for big things. Okay. Yeah, I can agree with that. That makes sense. You want hibachi, say less. I can do the little onion train thing. <laughs> Jack, like, we at the house. We cooking it up. I know that's right. And I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. If if it is not in the budget right now to go out and do extra stuff, then it's no reason to feel shamed about that. You do it at the house. Bring the restaurant to the house, for sure. Honestly, I feel the man shouldn't date or get married until he can hold down everything. That's just how... We are wired. Real man, get your real man, get your stuff together first, guys, before you look for any one daughter. Okay, now see when a woman says that, she is being, you know, she gets a bad rep, right? Like, oh, she's a gold digger, or like, what is she gonna spend her money on if the guy is paying for everything? Oh, we're not building. If the guy is paying for everything, all his money is going to be going towards the bills. And what, where is her money going to be going to? We get these kinds of questions. Y'all know it. Y'all have heard it. Some of y'all in this chat have said it. <laughs> I 
I can't hustle harder when you try to hustle me out of a stake. Oh, no. <laughs> Not trying to hustle you out of a stake. Listen, I will hope that everybody on this live can pay for a stake. I really hope that we are not stopping our finances at a stake. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. <laughs> Date people in your tax bracket. Come on now. Yep, totally agree. That's what I want to say last week. You don't have these problems when you're in a relationship with someone who is financially on your level. Yes, because nobody on last week's live could say where their money was going. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I know this many women. Uh, this. What are you saying? I ain't know this many women eat steak to this life. Oh, yeah. I love me a good steak for sure. I know how to order a steak and I know how to cook one. Boop. Um, <laughs> inflation up 6%. Them steaks ain't cheap. Listen, Jackson, brother. Listen. I know because you at work right now. You at work right now. And so I know that you are not working <laughs> to seven o'clock at night <laughs> and you ain't, you ain't able to afford a steak. Exactly. Julius, you, you penny pinching and you know it, you penny pinching. If you, if you with somebody and you got a penny pinch, you should not be with them. You should not be with them. If you feeling like, oh, this is too expensive for you and you have it. And you can spare it. You should not be with them. Because that means you don't like them. If you are uncomfortable with paying for things for your partner. And you have the money to pay for it. I'm, I'm going to assume you don't really like me. Or that you cheat. And so I don't really like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, th these my pockets. Chill out. Ain't not, listen, listen. Ain't nobody trying to come for your pockets. We just saying. You at work at 7 o'clock at night. You can afford a steak. I know you can. Gas too. Oh, yeah. Gas going up for sure. The gas is going up for sure. So, get with somebody in your tax bracket. Because, you know, gas go with that too with dating people. Oh, y'all going to hate to hear this one then. If y'all don't want to. If y'all don't. <laughs> If y'all don't want to pay for no steak and you talk about the gas prices high, y'all really going to hate to know that there are people in the world who will fill your tank up. Did you know it? Has it ever happened for you? Have you ever been blessed in that way? <laughs> Have you ever been blessed in that way where somebody filled your tank up? If you haven't, oh man, you, you, hmm. It's a good feeling. I'll say that. I ain't going to tell you what you should do. But it's it's a good feeling for sure. Yes. Okay. So we, we got some people who know about filling the tank up. Okay. Okay. See, Jay, you got you a good one. You got you a good one. Brought tears to your eyes. Yes. Yes. That. Okay. So for some women, that is a part of dating them. You put gas in their tank. So we when we talk about steak, oh, we ain't even scratched the surface of other stuff yet. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I think one of the problems are people are with people that they don't want to court and invest in. Whoa. Okay. Yes. It's easy to pay the bill for the love of your life. Anything is on the table. Are y'all listening to this? Are y'all listening to this? Because that's some wisdom right there. If you feel like it's too much, but you can afford it. You ain't, you ain't willing to court this person. You're not willing to wine and dine them. And so if you ain't willing to wine and dine them, even in the aspect of dating, you know, just going to restaurants and um, putting gas in their tank. You really ain't ready to move in with them. You really are not ready to talk about being in a marriage. There's just no way. There's just no way because 
When you get married, you're going to acquire other bills as well. And you mean tell me you don't want to pay for a steak? You don't want to put gas in her car? You don't want to hustle harder so that you are able to do these things? Oh, no. We can't even talk about marriage. We can't even scratch that surface because something is happening where you uncomfortable. You uncomfortable with doing you know, meeting, meeting certain expectations and you can't go into a marriage like that. Marriage requires vulnerability. Marriage requires, uh, you know, for you to be okay doing some things that make you uncomfortable sometimes, not in the sense of like disrespecting you, uh, disrespecting your morals and values, but marriage requires a whole nother level of sacrifice in comparison to just dating someone. If Biden drop another stimulus, you can have two stakes. I hope. I hope not. <laughs> I hope the stimulus ain't got nothing to do with whether or not you can buy a steak. You better be able to buy that steak with or without that stimulus. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. I see, I see, I see where some of the issue coming from. I see where some of the issue coming from. Some of y'all ain't making money. I ain't talk about nobody. I ain't talk about nobody. <laughs> got cussed out because I only put 20, 20 at the time, $20 at the time. Right. Okay. Fill it up. Fill it, <laughs> fill it up. Okay. And if you ain't there physically to fill up the tank, guess what? You got to send that cash out. What's up? What's up? What up? What up? I'm, I'm I'm looking at these comments. Yeah, there's a whole lot of cap going on in the comments, but we finna get down to it. Oh, okay. What what's the cap? Let me know the T. Nah, so my I had a I had one question. I'm still working, but I had to get on. I got a question. So we talking about finances and most people in the live have an idea that they believe their partner should carry 100% of the finances, right? So if I'm carrying 100% of the finances, more in my past relationships, I've nine times out of 10 been financially ahead of my partner, right? So if I'm carrying the mortgage, all the bills, uh, expenses outside of the household we going on vacations we going out to dinner like i said earlier i'm not taking you nowhere where i know i can't cover the bill your bill my bill and the table next to us mm -hmm. so and we're thinking about moving into marriage right mm -hmm. let's talk about blending finances mm -hmm. i have no debt the person i'm with has a lot of debt Mm -hmm. And I'm already carrying 100% of the bills. Am I then too expected to start helping her with her debt, paying off her bills? She running up credit cards like it ain't nothing. That's blended finances. That's the kind of stuff you talk about when you go into a marriage. It's not just, oh, can I take you out and buy you dinner? It's I'm holding down the household. And are you financially responsible enough to not fuck us up? Oh, I can't say that. To not mess us up. Mm-hmm. And bringing more debt into our household. Like, that's the kind of stuff I feel like we should be talking about. Who cares about buying a steak? Like, you can buy, you can have a steak, you can have 10 steaks, but are you financially literate and financially responsible enough to come into a household and be the woman that you need to be? And like I said earlier, nobody could say what they was doing with their money. So if I'm holding it down on 10 fronts with my money that I make and you financially reckless i hope that's where your money is going because you ain't helping me with nothing financially so what you doing i need, I need to hear what's in the comments like what y'all doing are you financially responsible or are you out here wilding with finances with mm -hmm. people in these comments are wilding in their finances for sure for sure and you know what and so um i think that we got into the topic of steak and didn't move past it into what you talking about is because we talking to some people who can't even pay for the steak. So your question is already answered. <laughs> I had to jump in. I had to jump in here because I want that to be the focus of this week. Mm -hmm. like The focus of an alpha woman where 
it was some people in the comments who never been able to tame an alpha woman. And I don't know why, but an alpha woman should be able to submit. We're not going to jump back in the last week, but I want to know why people aren't working to be financially responsible to have these conversations with their partners. If a woman is doing something and it makes her man feel less of a man, he's not a man to begin with. If you paying for his dinner makes him feel less of a man, like learn to take a fucking uh, thing, learn to take a compliment. Mm -hmm. Let your woman treat you from now and now and again like that. It should be nothing wrong with that. So, but are, is your partner working to be financially responsible? And if not, then you can't come be in a relationship with me. If you got hella debt and ain't paid the last creditor in the last five years, you cannot step in a relationship with me. If we go out and I'm going to pick up the tab, but if I decided not to, you should be able to reach over and pay for it. If you're not working to do that, then nobody should be able to have this conversation or be in this live. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are they going crazy? Uh-oh. What let's let's see what these comments saying. You gotta spend that with me, but I'm gonna spend on you too. Dinner and gas is just surface level dating. Yes, yes, yes. I give it back to him in increments if I haven't spent it on bills yet. Okay, good point. Debt should be discussed up front. Most marriages end due to finances. Things you have to talk about before marriage, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So so we got a little bit of sense in here. Okay. If you can't speak to a person about their money um, and they get mad every question, then, <laughs> then leave them. You're going to be miserable, for sure. For sure. I'm more financially responsible than him, which is why we had to come to the agreement that he just sent send it to me and I get the bills covered then we do what we do with the rest okay so y'all found a compromise even in you being more financially responsible okay. finances should be discussed within the first year of dating absolutely that should be discussed within the first three months of dating I feel like you should know where your partner is going financially and what they're working towards before you even make any type of real commitment yeah for sure for sure so what you're saying is you would be okay with paying 100%. No, I'm not your father. I'm not taking care of you. 100%. I feel like it would only be a situation where if I'm paying 100%, then no, because that would never be the case. Like if I have my own everything and I'm already taking care of myself at 100%, you should be somewhere else where you're taking care of yourself 100%. If we decide to blend and come in as one unit, that's not one unit. That's one person taking care of the unit. That's not us blending the unit. And I don't feel like that's, I don't feel like in today's society that's, that may work for some people, but that just doesn't work for me in my relationship. And I'm not saying it always has to be, it never has to be 50-50. It has to be what works in the house, like what works in that relationship where I'm big on budgets. And I know a lot of people that I meet can't even spell budget. So it just, it, it would have to work in a line with my budget. Like it would have to be something that on paper, what works best for us, what works best for our finances. So if I, if it's not lining up in a budget and I know in within our household, what I'm dealing with, what you're dealing with, and that's how our money comes together, then I don't feel like it's going to work because it's going to, it's going to take over on one person mentally when they're supporting and that's where a hundred percent of their money is going to, especially somebody who doesn't have anything left over, who doesn't have a savings where if I fell on hard times, could you pick me up? And if you can't, because you, first of all, you're not in my tax bracket. So if my tax bracket is paying for our household and I fall on hard times, you can't cover nothing. Mm -hmm. So then we stuck like Chuck. So what if they can cover it, right? So I'm just going to... Then why aren't they covering it from the beginning? Well, okay. So let me let me put it in this, in this context. So if y'all are in the same tax bracket, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm 100% that I'm 100% single. Oh, yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, so if y'all are in the same tax bracket, right? And you are deciding to pay for 
all the bills, right? You don't feel like it's a partnership because the other person is not paying for the bills. I just feel like it would have to make sense. Say I did decide to pay 100% of the bills, right? And that means my own finances outside of the household, your own finances outside of the household. Mm -hmm. Again, where can you tell me your finances are going? Like, and why? I don't feel like I should even be with a partner who would allow me to take on that load at 100%. Like, what what are you doing with the money? Like, last week, people were like, oh, I'm making the house a home. Well, I can make it a home, too. I can cook a meal. I can clean a house. Now what? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, are you leaning more towards 50-50 or? I say, I feel like it would have to be worked out in a budget. Like, what are the expenses? A lot of times, people don't even have expenses that will equal out to 50-50. Uh-huh. Or not 80, 20 or 70, 30, what they said earlier, like it would have to be what the expenses of the household are. Mm -hmm. But can you tell me where someone else may say or think that their money is going? What is, what is it being used for? So I, when I was, when I was talking about this with the front earlier, um, we were talking about how, um, when maybe when y'all fall on, Difficult, difficult times then technically what that person has is the savings mm -hmm. um, but also being able to have um, a joint account for savings mm -hmm. so y'all will go on trips or um, if there are um, maybe if you want to get a new car or things that are not bills so anything outside of that is that anything outside of that that you want to buy for yourself or is that for your partner as well because so if i want a new car i can just have my partner go and spend that at 100 percent for the new car or am i still expected to pay the car insurance on the new car no 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 you wouldn't be expected to do that so i think like all right so what we talked about is if one person is paying um, paying the bills, right? So we talked about mortgage, um, electric, water, all that good stuff, right? But like if you want to go, oh, the live is going to cut off soon. Um, but if you want to go buy yourself a new car and you've accumulated in a car note, maybe, maybe um, you'll pay for that car note yourself. Or if you, like you spoke about, uh-oh. All right, y'all. So it's about to cut off. So we're going to get her back on and we're going to keep having this conversation. Let me read these comments really quickly. Um, if I'm paying the bills in the house, I'm pretty sure someone is buying the couch, the TV, gym memberships. Yes, invest. Um, if I was handling my house before we got married, I can do... The same thing when we're married, I pay my personal bills and you pay your personal bills. Uh -huh. um, a rainy day fund, create a joint savings. That's their responsibility. Yes. Okay. So cool. It sounds like we all understand that the other person's money can be going towards other things. All right. So I'm going to cut this one and um, we're going to come back. <laughs> 